This is Survival Aftermath by C Drive Games, uh, C colon backslash games backslash. You loot and shoot people. It's nothing new conceptually, but from what I've played, I think it's one of the best survival PvP games on Roblox, and it's not even done yet. The atmosphere is great. There's a huge map with a bunch of different areas. Uh, the weapon animations are awesome, and the game has some realistic features that add a little bit of depth to it, but at the same time, I think it's easy for new players to pick it up. So here's a little brief overview guide, whatever. Games like Apocalypse Rising 2 and State of Anarchy, games which I like very much, don't have this key feature. You can take most things in the world, scrap them for their parts, or use them as ingredients to craft things that you need. You can craft backpacks, ammo, armor, medical supplies, even weapons. Currently, you can only craft a bear trap, a molotov, an anti-personnel mine, and a low-quality bow and arrow. But in the future, you'll be able to craft rudimentary firearms and all sorts of other improvised weapons. The crafting itself is pretty easy. You just press F to scrap items, and then you press U to look at your recipe book, and it just happens passively while you're running around. A major benefit of the system is the fact that any ammo you find is ammo you can use. If you find 5.56 and you need 9 mil, you can just press F on the 556 it'll turn into metal and gunpowder then you could craft 9 mil you don't have to worry about switching ammo types when you find a better weapon or having to switch to a worse weapon because you don't have ammo it's not realistic but i think it's good for gameplay because you don't get screwed over by rng as much and on top of that there's no magazine system i like magazine systems in games because i'm a firearm nerd but in terms of like actual fun gameplay yeah you don't need that really you can cut down trees too, and they had plans for base building, but none of the base building aspects are in the game yet, so... And the zombies. The zombies in this game are noticeably different from other zombie games that I've played, in the sense that they're kind of mostly passive, unpredictable, they show up in strange places, they're just kind of like wildlife in a sense, but the reason why they're dangerous is because they give your position away. It's not that you're really ever going to get killed by them, unless you plan something really poorly. Um, I'll explain. So the zombies will come from very far away when they hear gunfire, and this could take a pretty long period period of time in game. So you could have a large fight take place and I've noticed that a whole bunch of zombies will show up the next day. So if you stick around for too long you might not be able to loot that body because there'll be ridiculous amounts of zombies everywhere and even if they don't kill you a player is going to notice that if they're nearby. You'll just see them walking around in hordes in completely random places. Kind of reminds me of The Walking Dead. Also they just randomly start running even when they're not aggroed and sometimes they break down doors which is very scary if you're not ready for it. They just kind of put you on edge and they sound identical to humans a lot of the time. Zombies are also a way of getting cosmetics and sometimes backpacks. Hazmat zombies will drop a hazmat suit which lets you go into contaminated areas which is pretty cool. It's very obvious when you take damage in this game. Besides the audio and visual effects, a few status symbols will appear at the bottom of your screen. If you get shot, there's a good chance you're bleeding, and this can stack multiple times. On top of your health stack, you'll see a red number. This is the rate at which your health is draining. For each bleeding status you have, a bandage is required. There are some other status symbols that may appear. You need antibiotics for infections, and a splint for a broken leg. After you take care of these effects, you'll regain health, but it's slow. Basically, in this game, fights are risky and weapons are very lethal. I found that quite a few times I shoot players and they die after going back into cover due to blood loss. In terms of firearms, this game is pretty standard besides the fact that your weapons degrade over time. I personally haven't found this to be an issue since weapon repair kits are pretty common, but what's especially interesting about this game are the throwable items and the traps. With bear traps and mines, you can put attacking enemies at a massive disadvantage, and with molotovs and grenades, you can force enemies out. I think it's funny that you can also even throw empty glass bottles at people. It doesn't do much, but it's a cool option to have. And the fact that you can do that makes me think that they might add more unconventional weapons in the future. Okay, quick little edit. It doesn't do anything at all. Uh, I don't know if any developers are going to watch this because my channel's dead. But like, dude, what a missed opportunity. Make it do damage. That would be like so funny to take someone out with a glass bottle. 
There are some bugs I encountered, but they weren't that bad and it didn't really impact my experience at all. I'm gonna list them anyway. Uh, when you first join, you get this weird game pause thing. I wasn't recording when I first played, so I don't have footage of it, but I reset and then I rejoined and I think it, like, it was gone. So sometimes crafting breaks. Uh, I found that if I drop my bag and pick it back up, everything works fine again. This is made easier by the fact that all your stuff is saved inside the bag when it's dropped. So this is also a cool way to transfer loot between players players. You can craft Molotovs and they're very scary and they have a stupidly large blast radius. Um, I'd like to hope this isn't intentional, but you can throw one down a flight of stairs and you will get burned at the top. I don't understand it, but hey, if you have the recipe ingredients to craft one, uh, go ahead and spam them because they will kill people. I saw an invisible dude on a motorcycle once and as soon as he got off, he just appeared right in front of me and I gunned him down. It didn't happen the next time I saw someone on a motorcycle, so maybe it's kind of like a rare bug or something or it got fixed, I don't know. Um, certain items can be hard to reach if they're not at head level, so they won't even appear in the vicinity looting screen or be interactable. Like you can't just look at them and they highlight like other items. If you see ammo under a bed or on a high shelf, you might not be able to get it, which is mildly irritating, but hopefully that gets fixed. In terms of stuff I'd like to see in the future, definitely more craftable items, not just weaponry, but also food and clothing. In the same way that you can craft the best backpack in the game and the best med kit, it would be satisfying to have a standard craftable end game food source. Maybe they could consider adding fishing. I mean, they do have sugar packets in the game that currently don't do anything, and we do have apple trees. So maybe we'll be able to craft fruit preserves using glass jars. Again, this stuff is by no means necessary. I just think it'd be cool. I'm very excited for base building, especially the idea of raiding a base or rigging a base up with traps. It just seems like there's so much they could do with this game, so I hope they continue to deliver. Overall, good game, buy it. It's just a really good execution of a familiar concept. And if you can't buy it, wait for the weekend or for its eventual release. Alright, well I haven't uploaded in a long time, like actually sat down and edited a video, and uh... Part of the reason for that was I thought that a lot of the stuff I had for ideas for videos just weren't good enough. And I figured, you know what, whatever, I don't care if this has already been covered or if my video isn't the best. Uh, I just want to start making stuff again.